while people are sitting down, I'll just set up the session. Uh, today we are going to be talking about CK12, but you know, if people who know me, I always have to start with a story. So let me tell you a story about, this is one of my most favorite Somerset mom stories, and I think it gives you a great, great background of, this is about a church helper who's working in a church, and one day the vicar of the church finds out this guy can't read or write, and then he tells him, you know what, I'm going to give you two weeks. You should know at least how to read or write. So two weeks come by, this guy still doesn't know how to read or write, so the vicar fires him. And this guy has never done any other job all his life, so he's completely lost, so he's running around, what to do? So he goes to a place and finds that he walked for three hours, he didn't find any cigarettes. So he says, hmm, maybe I'll start a cigarette shop in this place. He starts a cigarette shop that becomes something bigger, cut a long story short, the guy becomes a multi-millionaire having many shops, etc. So now he has all this money, he's never had a bank account because he doesn't know how to read or write. So finally he goes to the bank with these bags of money and the bank manager says, are you crazy? You know, he says, yeah, I never opened a bank account because I couldn't read or write. So the bank manager says, my God, you made all this money without knowing how to read or write. Just imagine what you could have been if you could read or write. He says, I know, I would have been a church helper. <laughs> So the reason I love the story is that somehow education has become this thing that will only hold you back, not really propel you. But I think in this digital age with what we have, uh, we have people like Niru who are doing something where I think learning has finally become fun and it will give us what we want. So I'll give you a little, a few statistics at CK12, about CK12, okay? I've had the privilege of, I've been friends with Niru for a long time. I've been seeing the birth of this uh, organization in 2007. So since 2007, uh, they've built content, they've built a platform. Over 30,000 schools use the content. There's been a 22x growth in their activity, 50x growth in page views. This means that people are not just coming and going. They're actually spending time using this content. And the most important thing I love about it is that teachers are a part of it. The goal is not to replace teachers, but to take them along. So that's a bit of a background of what CK12 has accomplished. Now through our conversation, I really want you to get to know the person and the team behind it, because obviously it's never one person's activity. But Niru, uh, I want to go back in time before we get to CK12 and ask you, here you are, newly married, in America, microbiologist, um, you quit because you, didn't, you got pregnant, you didn't want your kids to be exposed to radioactive materials, you quit, you had four children. So tell me what was that phase like, in what way did that time give you an introduction to education in a very different way? Uh. That's a big question. Education in our families was very, very important. So it was but natural that no matter what I did, I was actually doing research at Stanford uh, on cancer-like genes. And I didn't think twice about giving that up and you know taking care of my kids because that's what Indian mothers do. And uh, radioactivity. But you weren't quite the tiger mom either. No, I'm not the tiger mom. I actually <laughs> asked myself, what do I want to do next? And I said, I had to get my kids educated in ways that, you know, I was never educated in. So I looked for a school that was very unique, that was child centered, and that, you know, never used a textbook. It was all about discovery. It was, more, you know, all about them, you know, showing interest and then finding the material to learn. As, as I, you know, I found that school and I sent all my four kids there and actually I also got a diploma from that school. I was on their innovation and uh, heading their education division for about 15 years. And, um, you know, one of the questions when my kids started going to high school, I asked myself is why is it that we can't give this kind of education to every kid, every, yeah. right? And, and being in Silicon Valley, I said, you know, we have so much, so much available to us that we can actually help everyone else. And, and te technology just seemed to be the right thing to do. Yeah. And, and also, in, uh, sorry, you, what do you mean to say that it's like a 
you know, object of a privileged few to get this kind of education. Absolutely. Why can't we democratize to everybody? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, that's what I set out to do, and technology was going to be that instrument. Um, so we've been trying to build. The first thing we did realize was that, that, at least in the U.S., the content was very expensive. Uh, Before we get to the content, I have another question to ask you. You had a very interesting perspective on what do you think is the role of school? Because, you know, the, as parents, we are all, you know, either we want the school to take care of everything, so I don't want to deal with it, or and I want my kid to be many, many things. So what, what in so, your view, what's the role of schools? Well, the, <laughs> it, it, it's one of the things that I kind of discovered in my path that really, as, as parents, as society, we expect our schools to do everything for us. Yeah. The social, emotional learning, how to get along with others, teaching them how to do, you know, uh, sports, teaching them how, uh, you know, how to do everything that you can think about. Basically, be um, babysitters. And I said, you know, that, that just can't be. We're wasting so much of our resources, wasting so much of our e energy, if we expect schools to do everything. Yeah. So one of the things that, you know, we, we said if we save time, save money for the school systems, we give them a system which actually is also helped by the teacher, because nobody knows the teacher, you know, the student as much as the teacher does. So one of the things we did was, okay, we built a system. We started with flexbooks, which are nothing but customizable textbooks, because my philosophy is that you sh every child is an individual, every child, every human being, and we all learn differently. So what we set out to do was we said, K-12 is very regulated. We need to build the base for these children, uh, you know, so that you can know addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or you can know, uh, you know, motion leads, change in motion is uh, speed, change in speed is velocity, velocity leads to acceleration. Those so either are through grade, either through grade or by subject. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, so one of the things we did was we said we'll give everything, there are about 5,000 concepts that a student needs to learn before they can, you know, finish high school. Ah. And so if we can give them all that uh, and then let teachers kind of create their own context, I mean, in, in, in India, a child might need a different social context or ethnic context than say might be needed in somewhere else. So we said, we can provide a system. So we start, we actually have two very distinct groups in our organization. Although we are a nonprofit, we function like a for-profit and we're very big into experimentation and innovation. So what we do is we have, um, you know, we kind of build the whole editor system so that you could take the, the content and edit this. We did this 10 years ago, or nine years ago, ago, and we built this, these long before anyone else was doing it. Even today, nobody has the whole system. And everything we provide is provided for free. So yeah. all our developers are doing a lot of innovation. We're actually moved towards what can digital really do? Uh, not only just save cost, I was horrified by how much schools are spending in the millions. California at that time was spending half a billion dollars in 2007, eight, um, and that just felt not right. And they were spending this to digitize content? What are they spending this money on? They were spending it on textbooks. Textbooks, okay. Yeah. okay. And as you know, and, and I came here and I talked to President Kalam at that point, and I said, you know, uh, Dr. Kalam, wouldn't you like to do this so that we could give you know, individualized content to each student in India as well. Yeah. And the response at that time was, look, we don't spend that much money on our books, books in India. Yeah. But, you know, um, I still think there's a lot of opportunity to do yeah. it in India so as we'll well. We'll come back to India, but there's a, there's a couple of interesting things you said. One is you decided to do it as a non-profit. I mean, today education is one of the most popular sectors to invest in, so to speak. Right. And, uh, and parents are willing to pay anything to right. get their kids educated well. Why did you decide to do it as a nonprofit? Uh, and I, basically, I, nobody pays for anything in this, right? The students don't I, I pay. I think it's, it's, a, it's a myth that you can make money in education. I really think 
that education is one of those things that, you know, you have to accept that you're giving back. You yeah. know, you're changing society, you're changing generations, you're, you're giving them what they need to learn, n not just all the other stuff that they have to learn. So yeah. our basic focus has been to kind of give them everything you would need in math and in science from K to 12. I actually don't think there should be grades. It actually should be just a learning continuum. So you go at your rate, and a technology can actually provide that kind of a, a go at your rate, um, yeah. you know, yeah. um, path. And you know, in this uh, experiment, not experiment, in this endeavor, you're making learning a lot more interactive because one of the things that we talked about is are the schools there for social or are they for education? I mean, if the kids can learn certain concepts at home and use the school more as a place where they can exchange ideas and do things, it's interesting. How have you built your platform? I mean, there's like a plethora of online education companies, right? So when yeah. you started, what yeah. is it you wanted to do so, to make it more interactive? So for K-12, like I said earlier, early education has to be contextualized. It just can't be randomness thrown out there, so you go kind of go find things for yourself. So we created a platform with technology in mind. We said everything we were going to create, we had to know how it really related to something else. So we created for every little piece we created uh, uh, encoding ID. Those encoding IDs, as, as we started getting the uh, platform to be more mature, those encoding IDs came really in use because we knew every time a child was reading something and every time they went to you know, watch a video or something, exactly how they were related. What was mm -hmm. the difficulty level? What was the grade they were working in? So in, in a way, we laid out this whole foundation of uh, you know, knowledge yeah. that we could actually then build upon. Mm -hmm. So right now, our systems become more, more uh, um, you know, more mature in terms of it's not just PDFs. We've actually got uh, everything that you can do with a digital platform provided. So you can learn in context with enriched modalities. So it's a video, it's a text, it's real world example. I'm a big believer of um, you know, teaching kids how all this relates in how yeah. you use it in every day. And all of that is contextualized in, in for that kid. Today, we can take a look at a kid and we can find out exactly what mistakes they're making and why they're making those mistakes because of this you know, intelligence, the knowledge pathways we've right. built. We've actually not just built knowledge pathways in particular domains, we've actually now built uh, um, interdisciplinary pathways. So we know if today you're having trouble with uh, you know, any kind of um, uh, higher education, uh, higher level uh, uh, concept, exactly where you're making a mistake. You probably didn't know how to do uh, graphs in algebra, so we can send you back and say, look, you, if you just l go back and you know, relearn graphing, you can actually go ahead and you know, learn much more deeply what you're doing. Yeah. So our system is actually very intelligent. Yeah, and I think you're using all the now buzzwords like machine learning and all that stuff to really, it's really about learning about me. You yes. know, give me something that learns about me and can figure out, because sometimes, even I may not know why I'm not able to get this concept, yes. but the machine can be, hey, it's because your fundas on, you know, the, your, your Newton's laws are not clear, so just go learn that. The that thing, was The great. thing about that is that it isn't correct yet. Yeah. We don't have, you know, the machines just can't go in there and do it. So you do need human intervention. I know you all know that Google did Google Maps, right? Google Maps were just didn't happen overnight. Yeah. Google actually sent people out on the streets and kind of, you know, measuring those streets and uh, how they connect and all that. They created those maps by human beings. Mm -hmm. So the way we've created these knowledge and we've created these relationships is truly through the teachers. So the law, you know, we've actually, it's not something that you just, machine learning happens. Right. Machine learning we use to kind of, um, mm -hmm. now we're starting to use machine learning to figure out, are these right? And we confirm that by having our teachers confirm 
you know, whatever results we're seeing. Yeah. So we're actually now, you know, using digital in a way that digital should have been used in the classroom. We've had school districts, you know, one of our largest partners is about 400,000 school districts, and all of them are, um, you know, stopping to do not just math and science in our system, but actually now they're starting to create everything they teach on our yeah. system. Yeah. And, and the good part about that is that now we can make that available to everybody else for free. Right. And in what way do you think, you know, India has been talking about a lot of things. So in what way can you think Digital India and uh, CK12 can work together? So uh, I'm really happy to see uh, what's happening in India. It's really exciting. Uh, I came in 1993, and I wanted to see what was happening in the nonprofit sector. I went for a meeting. Everyone was carrying a thala. And the moment we sat down to do a meeting, out of the thalas came computers, the PCs, right? So 1993, it was actually mind-blowing for me. So yeah. at this point, I'm, I'm really, really amazed to see there are 5,000 people here at this conference, and I'm really amazed to see, um, you know, we have people who are interested in this. We have an office, India office, so we are actually starting to move into the India uh, world as well. Um, we've created uh, CBSC content. We'd love help. We have really, uh, you know, I think uh, Amit Gupta is sitting in the, in the, can you stand up for a minute, Amit? So if anyone wants any developer, we're doing really exciting 3D animations. We're doing, uh, you know, simulations in physics, uh, the 3D stuff in chemistry. And Shreyas is one of our lead developers. They're actually doing work that you won't really even see in, in for-profit world. Mm -hmm. So we're looking, always looking for talent because we know we need it for, particularly in the, in the India context. So if you, anyone who's really skilled and wants to do something exciting, you know, Amit is in the, come and see me, or Amit, we'd love to um, get people to get involved. One of the things I believe is uh, most people don't take nonprofits seriously. Because yeah. most profit, nonprofits are not really focusing uh, seriously. We're actually, we have a for-profit mentality. Yeah. And, and what we do is we kind of, if you, I think if you really want to build skills and then go on to build, you know, awesome companies, a place like CK12 would be really important for, yeah. you know, young developers to come in and learn skills that you won't be allowed to do in most uh, for-profit companies, yeah. at least not in the beginning. If you come with something, we can, you know, we can offer you that platform to build your skills, and actually, it's really fascinating to come and see what we are doing. Um, so, so Niru, I just want to—I I do want to wrap up by saying that you know you're somebody who can kick back and relax at home and really not do this. And so, I'm really glad you. I know after your kids went off to college, you took this, and I think there is thousands of people benefiting from it. And I hope that right now you're in math and science, and I hope this extends to other subjects as well. And I really look forward to having this become, you know, we all want to be, you know, students for life, right? I mean, learning is really fun if the process is there. So yeah. thank you very much. So thank you. Okay.